What is going on everybody, Zonic here, and in today's video, we are diving into the Ultra League Premier Cup. This has been a meta that I have loved ever since its introduction into Go Battle League. It is banning Legendary, Mythical, and Ultra Beasts. So this meta is actually a very open and wide meta. A lot of good Pokemon that you guys can use. You don't need XL Pokemon. I don't have any. The Venusaur, Walrein, and Empoleon are not XL. You guys just need good coverage and team synergy, which is why I'm running this uh, ABB team, Venusaur, Walrein, and Empoleon. Empoleon with the upgraded Steel Wing is a beautiful safe swap in this meta. Venusaur is incredible at core breaking a lot of teams because of its typing and move coverage. It can break apart a lot of the water fire uh, fighter cores. It can do neutral damage with Sludge Bomb to a lot of the fires or stuff like Shadow Dragonite. It's very strong. This team did incredibly well for me today. I hope you guys enjoy. Be sure to let me know down in the comments what Pokemon and teams are you guys trying because the Ultra League Premier Cup, like I said, is a wide meta. I would love to get some inspiration on teams to run, so be sure to let me know. Let's get right into it. All right, getting into the first battle. Venusaur on the lead versus Talonflame. This is obviously going to be a tough lead. What I like to do is go for one Vine Whip and then swap into the Empoleon right there. That energy is going to come in crucial later on in this game. Now, what's great about Empoleon is the Pokemon that it draws out. And it typically draws out a Fighter or it draws out a Grass, something like Venusaur right here. Or it draws out an Electric, right? Maybe an Ampharos, maybe a Heliolisk, Lantern potentially sometimes. But what's great about the Empoleon is it's typing as we take neutral uh, from the frenzy plant right there we are able to get to another drill peck now I don't necessarily need to force hard switch wall rain is a good answer to Talonflame But it's not a hard answer because of its added ice typing to it, right? The water ice We take a lot of neutral damage from incinerate what I'm gonna look to do instead is Capitalize on the potential energy gain here with my own Venusaur I'm gonna look to go for an aggressive farm down with vine whip if I get hit with another sludge bomb Bomb, so be it but I want to maintain the one shields and have lots of energy because this sludge bomb is going to go a lot of places as we can easily let that go through now Talonflame is likely going to be coming in right here which it is so we're going to go ahead and go for the sludge bomb this again does quite a bit of damage like 30 40 percent of Talonflame's health as you see it's already at 50 percent hp so we're going to go ahead and counter swap now into wall rain here to catch the charge move we're hoping this is going to be flame charge but it's actually going to be a brave bird which does a lot of damage and we do see a trevenant swap in and this is where wall rain can shine core breaking some of those uh, flyers and grass type Pokemon that you guys will see and because of the nerf to seed bomb a while back this Trevenant here is not going to be able to get to two seed bombs in time it got nerfed based on how much energy it costs so what you guys are going to see is I'm going to get the aggressive powder snow down right here as we take out the Trevenant now we're going to look to go for an ice school spear and we should be able to survive this next incinerate and get to a second ice school spear in time which will be forcing the the final shield um, of this game and then our Venusaur has a sludge bomb ready to go which is why I said all that energy that we were trying to sneak through came in clutch because we have the perfect amount of energy ready to throw the sludge bomb and Venusaur is going to be taking the win here for me so that is going to be a good game very well played all right, moving to the next one, Venusaur against Gavantula. Now, Gavantula can be a very strong core breaker against this team. Lunge and Discharge are tough charge moves, honestly, to deal with. But what's great is the fact that we can overcome that with a lot of neutral play. So we're going to go ahead and let the Lunge go through, and then we're going to go for a Sludge Bomb right here. This is still going to do a good amount of damage. Gavantula is pretty glassy in the Ultra League as they do decide to shield. And then we're going to try to catch the next next lunge on wall rain but they held the energy so that's a good play on them and we're gonna let this discharge go through if Gavantula is the biggest core breaker right to this whole team because it's on the lead Gavantula honestly is a is a big threat to this team the backline might not be as strong against Empoleon um, as this uh, Gavantula is so we're basically going to sacrifice the wall rain right here we're going to come in with Empoleon 
and we're going to look to load up on energy. Steel wing should do a decent amount of damage here. We might be able to get the farm down, um, but we're going to go ahead and come in and they actually swap in immediately into shadow skunk tank. So now I have a beautiful opportunity in front of me. And you guys always want to capitalize on this if you are running an Empoleon in a situation where the fast move is heavily resisted. And that's going to be overloading on energy. This is a beautiful position to be in because now Gavantula, when it comes back in, has to face off against a Hydro Cannon right away. Boom! We take out the Shadow Skunk Tank and my opponent actually decides to surrender. So that is going to be a good game, very well played. Empoleon obviously must have core broken that back line and that is going to be a good game. All right, moving to the next one. Venusaur versus Shadow Magnezone. Uh, so this is uh, two powerful Pokemon facing off against each other. Wild Charge, obviously, devastating against my backline. But we do have some great typings here uh, with Venusaur to resist that. Now, they swap in a Gudra, which Walrein can do pretty well against with the Powder Snow Ice Cold Spear combination. But what we need to watch out for is the Power Whip. And because Dragon Breath isn't that great at gaining energy, looking at the health here, I'm going to go ahead and make a call that if I invest a shield to stop the Power Whip, which it was, I should be able to get an aggressive farm down with Powder Snow. And now we're going to be putting that Shadow Magnezone in a very tough position right here because what we're going to do is we're going to go for Ice School Spear. Obviously, they have to fear the Earthquake, but this Ice School Spear should be able to get a shield, and now they're forced to throw. Before, they might have been able to get an aggressive farm down had I thrown the earth Earthquake. But now they're forced to throw a Wild Charge. We're going to come back in with Venusaur and make sure we overload on energy. I'm not concerned about getting hit with a Wild Charge or a Mirror Shot right here. What I want is plenty of energy, and it's actually going to be Mandibuzz in the back. I was kind of anticipating a Gallade back there, which is why I was holding a lot of energy on my Venusaur to be able to handle that. But Empoleon's still going to do well against the Mandibuzz, which is, I believe, XL Best Buddy right there. And like I said, you guys don't, I mean, it's great to have XL Pokemon, don't get me wrong, but the Ultra League Premier Cup has so many good Pokemon that it's not mandatory. I, I don't have many. I think the only XL Pokemon that I have in the Ultra League right now is a Berserker, and it's barely XL. I think it's like level 43. So what you guys are going to see is that it's just really important to have really good synergies and coverages. Pokemon like Empoleon and Venusaur are really strong together in this meta, as we will see the Mandibuzz look to go for an air. I believe they go for Aerial Ace here. I'm going to decide to shield because I'm anticipating them swapping into Magnezone, which they did. And this is beautiful because I have a Hydro Cannon ready to go. So choose, pick your poison, right? Boom! Had they shielded that, right? I swap into Venusaur and I double Frenzy Plant. But now with Mandibuzz coming in, it has one shield remaining. We're going to go ahead and go for double Frenzy Plant ourselves in order to win this game. Even if they got the Aerial Ace off, I don't think it's enough damage here to KO the Venusaur. It would have gotten us low, but I don't think it KOs. So good game to my opponent. All right, moving to the next one, Venusaur versus Shadow Alolan Ninetales. Now, if this is Powder Snow, I'm swapping out right away, but it's actually going to be Charm. So this is a really cool position for me to be in. And one thing I always like to say, notice what my opponent is doing and not doing. Charm Alolan Ninetales has a terrible matchup against Venusaur. So I am guessing they're actually extremely weak in the back to Venusaur, and sure enough, they were. And I come in with Empoleon right here, not only to do some chip damage with Steel Wing against the Alolan Ninetales, but getting ahead on energy with Hydro Cannon is going to be very beneficial for me, because this Swampert now is in a 2-1 to one shield position. They're going to have to throw an Earthquake in order to knock me out, and I can take advantage of that by shielding and stopping that earthquake right here and now they're in a very tough position to be in right hydro cannon will ko the the swampert from this range they decide to uh to shield that one so now venusaur is going to get a free knockout 
on the Alolan Ninetales because of how much energy it's going to be able to get as I will let this earthquake go through. Boom! And now we're going to aggressively farm down with Venusaur and this is a great position to be in. Walrein can still do well against the Shadow Alolan Ninetales because an earthquake will be enough to KO and it's bulky enough to survive charm. But now we're going to see what they decide to come in with. It's going to be a Shadow Gliscor so I'm going to go ahead and swap out right away into the Walrein so I can get ahead on energy forcing the swap out of Shadow Gliscor so it doesn't load up a bunch and forcing the swap in of this Shadow Alolan Ninetales because now Walrein is going to be able to do a beautiful sweep for me, making sure I overload on energy. Earthquake, like I said before, enough neutral damage here to KO. Boom, down it goes, and now Ice School Spear is obviously facing off against the Shadow Gliscor, and because it wasn't able to farm a lot of energy, Walrein here is going to safely survive a Night Slash, and then we will see the almighty Icicle Spear boom here against the Shadow Gliscor in the Ultra League Premier Cup. Boom, see ya! And that is going to be a good game, very well played. All right, moving to the next one, Venusaur into Shadow Gliscor. So this is kind of tough. Uh, obviously, I have a great answer in the back. In hindsight, looking at this, I should have swapped into Empoleon, or I feel like I should have swapped into Empoleon right away. Um, but what we're going to look to do is just go for Frenzy Plant. We do get a shield here, and I decided to shield myself. Um, I should have probably let that go. But I'm now going to swap into Empoleon to get ahead on energy, and they swap in a Poliwrath. So this is still a decent position to be in uh, for two reasons. Firstly, uh, Poliwrath obviously does a lot better against Walrein because we don't do super effective damage, right? And Empoleon here with Steel Wing is going to be able to get to multiple Drill Packs against the Poliwrath as they decide to go for Icy Wind. Now this Drill Pack here is going to get them close to knocking them out. And this is going to be very dangerous for both of us as they decide to no shield right here. And now it's a fast move race and it looks like Counter is going to be able to take it. Now they obviously are going to be throwing Icy Wind. So what I actually want to do is come in with Wall Rain to soak this. Because I have a feeling or a hunch that something else might be weak to Venusaur in the back, but this is still a better play because I can get a good farm down with Powder Snow and have plenty of energy. Now we will see that in fact it's a Lantern in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and load up to an Earthquake and then swap out into Venusaur and to, uh, to soak the damage right here as they decide to throw the charge move. This is perfectly fine by me as a Surf is not going to do that much damage. We do see Shadow Gliscor come in so I'm going to try to get to this Frenzy Plant in time. But knowing that Night Slash is going to be able to uh, not KO, I decide to let it go. And the reason why I decided to let it go is because they will outpace me to the second one. And my hope is that Shadow Wall Rain can carry this game for me. Now I make a critical mistake right here and I don't throw the Icicle Spear. I instead let this Night Slash go through and this is where it just does way too much damage. I was not anticipating that much damage being hit. And now what we are going to see is Icicle Spear obviously... Boom, knocks it out, but Lantern, XL Lantern, best buddy right there, is too tanky. Earthquake is going to do a lot, but it's not going to be enough to KO, and they are just going to be able to spark me down, so that is going to be a good game, very well played. Alright, moving to the next one, Greedent. This is by far probably the, probably the most annoying Pokemon for me to face off against. It's all personal preference. I'm sure you have a Pokemon that you just really don't like facing off against. You got no bad feelings about the Pokemon, but when you battle it, you're just like, I don't like you. Greedon is one of those, and I decide to swap into Empoleon here, hoping to catch a Body Slam. And the reason why I don't like Greedon is because of Mudshot and Body Slam is so spammy, it's just ridiculous. Now, we draw out a Lantern here, and this is very good for us. Much like the Great League, where Lantern gets farmed down aggressively by Grass-type Pokemon, the same thing happens here. But what's great about the Ultra League is the added bulk that we have. So Venusaur is going to be able to get in a very aggressive farm down. So we're going to go ahead and go for Hydro Cannons here, as that's going to be the best charge move to throw in this situation. And unfortunately, I don't get to the third one in time. And Venusaur right here is... Uh, 
is excited to get an aggressive farm down. So we're going to go ahead and come in. Vine Whip does a decent amount of damage. I feel like we can survive two Thunderbolts and maybe a Surf. As you guys can see, Surf doesn't do that much. So we're just going to go ahead and just go for the all-out farm down. Now my opponent might be reading now that, you know what? Maybe I should be swapping out, and they do. They decide to swap out back into Greedon. So obviously, I'm going to keep my Venusaur uh, excuse me, alive here. As we do get a shield, we're going to counter swap into wall rain. And this is where, um, th this is where body slam and mud shot combination is going to be shown of why I just really dislike it. Look, there's one, there's two, and I'm just trying to overload a bit on energy, right? I'm not trying to go for 100 energy, but you guys are going to see there's two body slams. Here's going to be three body slams. I'm just like, dude, I've had enough. Like greedent, stop. This is way too spammy as a uh, body slam will get us relatively low. So now I'm just going to have to throw the ice cold spear. I do not want to deal with another body slam coming through and this should be enough to KO, which it does. We're still in the ones. They decide to come in with lantern, which is a pretty big call for me to shield right here because I'm thinking maybe it's something like Dragonite. Uh, maybe it's something like Gliscor. I decide to swap into Venusaur. And it's actually Trevenant in the back. So we're going to go ahead and go for the sludge bomb here. And this is what I love about Venusaur is the frenzy plant sludge bomb combination for the ultra league premier cup. It's got a wide range of coverage, everyone. And what we're going to look to do is leverage our bulk here. I'm going to no shield. I'm going to pray that they went for seed bomb, which they did. And we survive and we are able to get the sludge bomb off in time. This is going to be forcing the final shield from our opponent, which they do decide to shield. We go for the icicle spear right away. There's no messing around when it comes to the damage from shadow claw. Boom, down it goes, and now we're going to go for another Ice School Spear here against Lantern, and that is going to be a good game, very well played. Wall Rain, clutching it up for me here against Lantern in this battle, and that is a good game to my opponent. All right, moving to the next one, Venusaur versus Shadow Polyrath. Obviously, very good lead for us, and I'm anticipating them swapping out, which they do. So I'm going to go ahead and come in with Empoleon into this Galissapod. Now, Galissapod is very strong in the Ultra League, open Ultra League, as a matter of fact. In this meta, it's pretty strong as well, as we're going to go ahead and go for Dropek here. But what I love about Empoleon is the ability to resist those charge moves that it's going to be throwing while doing super effective damage with Dropek. But now we're going to be in a very tough position right here, where if I don't shield, Galissapod could force switch. If I do shield, Empoleon gets to, or um, Polyrath gets to farm down and throw multiple icy winds against Venusaur. So I'm actually going to opt for shield advantage. And this is, this is a risky call. We're going to come in with Wall Rain and we're going to go for the aggressive farm down. Powder Snow is going to get us a lot of energy because it's resisted by that water typing. And I'd much rather have a two to one shield advantage with a Venusaur and Wall Rain than shield disadvantage uh, with a Polyrath getting an aggressive farm down. So now we're going to go ahead and go for Earthquake. This is going to get the Shadow Polyrath well below 50% HP or it gets a shield, we get it below 50%, we're going to go ahead and swap into Venusaur now. So yes, we're going to be hit with an icy wind, but at least we got the health down low enough where now we're going to be able to outpace and they actually swap in Heliolisk. So this is a very good situation for us to be in as Venusaur now is going to be resisting the Volt Switch fast move and Frenzy Plan is going to be doing so much damage. We have to watch out for Breaking Swipe. They typically run Breaking Swipe and Thunderbolt as the charge moves and as you guys can see breaking swipe doesn't do that much damage it does a good amount but it's enough for us to be able to survive and Venusaur right here has the opportunity to clutch this game for us as I need two frenzy plants in order to win this game so I'm gonna go ahead and shield this next breaking swipe I'm gonna look to overload on energy as they go for one more breaking swipe but we know we can survive this we've seen the damage from before and now we are in the race to get to two frenzy plants and we get there in time this is going to be knocking out the heliolisk and the polyrath coming in is low enough where even with our debuffs from icy wind and breaking swipe this frenzy plant will be enough to knock out the polyrath and boom that is going to be a good game very well played
I'm telling you guys, Venusaur is very strong in this meta. All right, moving into the final battle, Venusaur versus Swampert. Hey, we got a beautiful lead right here. Swampert does not like to see the Venusaur, and we do see a Tentacruel swap in. So what I'm going to do is a delayed swap out. Why do I do this? Frenzy Plant here is going to do enough chip damage where I get the Tentacruel to about 50%, and then Empoleon has a phenomenal matchup because of its typing to resist Poison Jab, Scald, Acid Spray, Sludge Wave, we don't need to be giving up a shield. So what I would rather do is come in with the Empoleon after chunking the health and then making sure that I go for a Drill Peck before I get hit with a Skull Debuff and then now I can farm down with Steel Wing having plenty of energy on the back end for Swampert. So I maintain Switch Advantage, I maintain Shields and we are looking very, very good as Tentacruel is going to get farmed down by Steel Wing. Now that Swampert coming in obviously needs to watch out for Hydro Cannon. It doesn't necessarily have to shield the first one, but the second and third might start adding up. Even though we've been debuffed with Scald, this is where things start to get out of control and where the Swampert has to get rid of us quickly, which means it can't overload on energy to be able to hit the, the Venusaur on our end um, with a lot of damage. Um, and uh, now we get it into the red. So what we're going to look to do, I'm going to do a quick pause here. What I'm going to look to do, I'm only doing this once in the video. What would you do in this situation? I would come in with wall rain. The reason being is I know this Swampert is just going to swap out right away. And if wall rain has a good matchup or it's a neutral matchup, I need to be ahead or at least even on energy for that. If it has a bad matchup, then typically Venusaur is going to be covering it, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to come in Wall Rain, and sure enough, there's a Skarmory in the back. So that actually saved us a turn or two worth of energy where I didn't come in with Venusaur and have to swap. Instead, I'm on even pacing, if not ahead, by one fast move of this Skarmory, which is going to be crucial for us. Now, my opponent obviously has to knock us out, and they won't be able to do that by throwing a Brave Bird first, which is why I decided to no shield that charge move, because had they done that, one, we would have still survived, and two, it would have sealed their fate because they would take way too much damage. But now, Walrein's in a very good position where Powder Snow and Icicle Spear is a beautiful combination to get rid of this Skarmory. I'm also anticipating them eventually swapping into Swampert here to try to snipe a, uh, a Hydro Cannon to take me out. And there it is, so I decide to counter swap right away and we catch the charge move. Again, you guys got to be on your toes when you guys are playing Go Battle League, anticipating your opponent's move. What is their win condition? And it was forcing a shield with Hydro Cannon. So that is going to be a good game, very well played. This team was phenomenal it was very strong no xl pokemon all pokemon you guys likely already have if not can build venusaur wall rain core with an empoleon safe swap i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and like always thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one